Now that we've covered fast food, we are going to elevate our home cooking. Uh, you know, we love a good cookbook around here at New Day, and we're always looking to check out some new ones. So here with a few books she thinks we should know about this spring is Laura Hamilton from Book Larder. Welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. I was so glad to see you on the roster because we hadn't seen you in a while, and you always bring us such great, delightful things, and you do not disappoint this time. The very first book is just so joyful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mayumu by Abby Balingit. It's a Filipino baking book. Um, she would say Filipino inspired. Okay. Um, Filipino food has cer certainly gotten extremely popular nationally. It's obviously very popular here in Seattle. Right. Um, Abby is a blogger who sort of came to prominence in the pandemic because she was making baked good treats for her local health workers. Oh, that's and awesome. um, yeah, and so these are really um, sort of the the flavors of her childhood, sometimes put in what you might consider more Western baking. Mm -hmm. recipes as well as lots and lots of personal stories and family photos and things like that so it's just a really fun like you said joyful um, colorful beautiful book and I like the encouragement she even has a section on candies and says you don't have to be Willy Wonka to be able to make these candies at home I exactly really love that. exactly our next book the everlasting meal cookbook Wow what is this so this is an endlessly useful book of how to use up leftovers uh -huh. if you've got something sitting in your pantry or your fridge that you don't know what to do with. It's organized alphabetically and you can look it up and figure out what you want to do um, and it gives you just tons of ideas. Oh this is, how has no one ever thought <laughs> of this before? It's basically an encyclopedia and you know I, I chatted with the author and um, I think she's got ideas to maybe make it like a whole series because Amen. she just she has one of those brains that just can come up with an idea for anything. Um, and it's also got some beautifully written essays along with core recipes. So while this isn't a book that, you know, like this one has got lots of color and is, mm -hmm. you know, sort of lots of photos, it is one that you will go to, I think, for years and years, um, just when you've got that, you know, sort of sad bunch of herbs in your fridge or um, even, you know, she even has um, Oreos where she basically says, yeah. you know, Stale Oreos are good, let's be honest, so yeah. don't do anything with them, just eat them. <laughs> just, well, you know what, I love that. I love that honesty. She even has like, you know when you have extra cheesecake? A cheesecake milkshake. Yeah. Okay, this is a great gift Lasagna for soup. anyone. This oh, is yeah. honestly, for the, somebody who has everything, okay, that's the perfect, yep. I'm taking a picture of that before you go. Absolutely. All right, our next book, 100 Morning Treats. Yeah, this is Sarah Kiefer, who is a fabulous baking author. Um, and this is a little bit savory, but mostly sweet, 100 all kinds of skill level baking ideas for, for morning meals. Um, so you've got everything from muffins to croissants to morning rolls. Um, and like I said, a, a few savory things mixed in there as well. And I didn't even bother to flag any pages because you can turn to pretty much any page in this book and find something that you I want to make. Y'all are gonna hear my stomach growling <laughs> in a second because seriously, pumpkin caramel monkey bread? Yeah. It, literally, that sounds amazing. Yeah, the coffee cake is amazing and it's got a streusel topping you can just keep in your freezer. So you can just sort of put the ingredients together in the morning, throw the streusel on top and have coffee cake in about an hour. I mean, I can't even. There's even a chapter on the weekend. Okay, here, this is another wonderful book. And yep. who doesn't love breakfast? We were just talking about breakfast for any time of day. All right, yep. Dark Ryan Honey Kid. Yeah. That's an interesting title. What, what do we got in here? <laughs> so this is actually a Belgian baking book. I tried to bring books today, you know, since we've got um, sort of parent days, you know, Mother's mm -hmm. Day, Father's Day, new grads coming up. I think this is a wonderful book for some, for the baker who has everything, okay, but also for somebody who likes history along with their, yes. with their recipes. So this is again, beautifully photographed, um, oh, but yes. it's also um, just deeply researched. Mm -hmm. So Belgium, of course, known for waffles, um, and Regula Yezwin, the author, um, again, really gets into sort of the historical side of things, and she's got different recipes for Belgian waffles, so if you wanted to see kind of what they might have been like in the 1700s, you can try that, or you can do sort of a more modern version. You're not kidding me. She's like 16th century art pictures in here of baking. Yeah. This is what I call a kitchen counter book. It's like a coffee table book, but it, it merits being on a kitchen counter. Oh, absolutely. Because you would use it for sure. Because when your friends are over, they can just look through it, and even if you need a little, you know, you're waiting for the microwave to finish, you can look at <laughs> advanced baking. Yeah, absolutely. That is a truly beautiful book. Yeah, and Dark very Ryan usable as well. Yep. Yes. Okay. And then we have 
have two local authors to finish up with. First is Michaela Tartaglia of Pasta Casalinga down in Pike Place Market. Yes. She has written a beautiful seasonal pasta book that actually comes out next week. And um, so it's got all kinds of recipes by season along with some core recipes that you can make any time of year. Um, so the spring recipes, of course, have lots of asparagus and morels. Um, it's beautifully photographed, mm -hmm. lovely drawings. And um, again, it's just, it's so lovely to see a book that's got so many of those ingredients that we find here in the Northwest used so effectively and deliciously. 1,000%, and she's a friend of this show, and I mean, her food never disappoints, so it's such kind of a wonderful thing when you see someone who's got such a great gift to be able to share it, yep. and share it in a book that is, is very, this is a very, very approachable yeah. book. Absolutely. I mean, when I see something with a recipe that short, I think, I can handle this. <laughs> That's right. I can do this. Thank you, Michaela. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is delightful. Oh, I'm so happy that she did this. Chelan yeah. grapes, rosemary. I mean, this is something that is so perfect. And what a what an homage to our neck of the woods. Yeah. That's beautiful. Absolutely. All right, we got one book. And left. then finally, yeah, McKinney Howell and the tenth anniversary edition of um, what was originally the Plum Cookbook, but now McKinney's Vegan Kitchen. Oh. And um, so it's just kind of gotten a bit of a refresh, but if you didn't pick this book up the first time around, now's a great time to do it. She's, of course, Tacoma raised, lifelong vegan, and so, you know, is not someone who's coming at this just because sort of being vegan is cool. This is a real, the way of life for her. This is where her heart is. Yep, absolutely, and it, it shows. And it shows, and if there's any reason that you should get this book at all, it is because of the curried red yam fries. <laughs> make sure you cook those and make them for yeah, me. And they're delicious. Know how they turn out. Oh, that looks delicious. And also very approachable, too. Yeah. Oh, Laura, thank you so much for always sharing these incredible, wonderful books with us. Um, I cannot wait to dive into so many of them. It's been a pleasure. No, as always, thank you oh, so much, Amity. Yes, and go visit Book Larder. There is always wonderful things to find there.